hi and welcome to MRTV. This video is all about the new NVIDIA 3000 series graphics cards, the 3070, 3080 and 3090. Because you probably want to pick up one of these cards in order to run your upcoming Reverb G2 or the Valve Index or any of the other PC VR headsets, but you have actually no idea about what CUDA cores are, what Tensor cores are, and what is RDX, and so on and so forth. Perfect, you found the perfect video, because in this video I'm simply going to let you know which of the graphics cards is the right one for you and for your headsets. So absolutely stay tuned, watch the whole video, because all of this goodness is coming up. Welcome back again here to MRTV. My name is Sebastian Ang and this channel is all about virtual reality. I'm bringing you unbiased and honest reviews of all the VR headsets, of your accessories and you're getting the latest news. So if you want more videos just like this one here, then absolutely subscribe to this channel and click on the bell button so that you don't miss anything. The new NVIDIA graphics cards are out soon and we're going to have a look at them now and we're going to find out together which one is the right one for you. All right, three cards have been introduced. The GeForce RTX 3070. Of these three models, this is the entry level model and that starts at $499. And according to Nvidia, this card actually is even better than the current RTX 2080 Ti, the current flagship model that was more expensive than $1000. So this is incredible value and I believe now is the right time to upgrade for all of you who probably still have a 1080, 1070 or 1060. So this is really cool. Then the next model is the GeForce RDX 3080. And this one starts at $699. Now this is $200 more expensive than the 3070. And this is even more expensive. And actually this is the model for already enthusiasts, for gamers. This is the enthusiast gamer card now and priced at $699. And I believe all of us are kind of happy about this price that this time we're not getting to the thousand dollars here for their enthusiast card. Then we have the GeForce RDX 3090 and this one starts at $1,499. Now this card actually is not really meant for gamers. This is more what the Titan card has been in the last generations. And well, this has like 24 gigabyte of of RAM and well, this is not really meant for us, but for some of us, it might still be worth it. And I'm going to talk about this more now. So which of the three cards should you buy for virtual reality, the 3070, 3080 or 3090? So first of all, I would say the best thing to do is wait for the MRTV benchmarks because I'm going to benchmark all of these cards with VR. So I'm going to specifically check them out for VR. And after you've watched the MRTV benchmarks, then you really know about the VR performance of these cards. So at this moment in time, I simply give you an idea from the data that we got from NVIDIA. And according to these data and what they've claimed, the 3070, the entry level model, which costs $500, is even performing better than the 2080 Ti, the current flagship model. So this means that the 3070 is fast enough to run the Reverb G2 and the Valve Index at their full resolution, at their, at their best frame rate that they can do, and you're going to have a great time. So if you're wondering, is the 3070 good enough? Yes, it is good enough for the Reverb G2. And the reason is the minimum specs of the Reverb G2, where you can still run, them, run it at the full resolution, is the 1080, the 1080, right? So that's two generations before. And this is the, the 3070 is supposed to be better than the flagship model of the 20 series cards. So this means for sure the 3070 for $500 will be good enough for you to play with the Reverb G2. And well, so I can definitely recommend it to you. However, if you have $200 more, then I would say go for the 3080 because, well, the 3080 is just, well, well, it's, it's way faster than the 3070 according 
to what NVIDIA is showing us here. And let's have a look at those benchmarks. All right, these are the benchmarks that NVIDIA has given us here. And what they do is they compare the 2070 Super, a graphics card that I personally own, to the 3070 here and 3080 in green. And they do that with different kinds of games here. Some are with RDX on, with the ray tracing on, but we're not going to look at these because for VR games, this is not really seen. So let's have a look at these games here. And 1.0, this is their standard here with the 2070 Super. Again, this is a this is a graphics card that I own and with which I could run the Reverb G2 already really well. And if you check out the 3070 here, you will see that you have like around 1.4 or 1.5 times the performance of the 2070 Super. So this is really nice and this means yet that yes, with the 3070 um, cards, you will be able to run the Reverb G2 and therefore also the Valve Index and all the other standard VR headsets that are on the market and you will be able to run them really well. So if you have $200 more, then again, I would recommend you to go for the 3080 because as you can tell here, you even have so much more performance here. And if you compare that to the 2070 Super, you nearly have double the performance of the 2070 Super. And again, I can use the Reverb D2 really well with the 2070 Super, running it at yeah the full at the full um, resolution with the full frame rate. Uh, and well, I don't have problems. But for sure, with the 3070, you're going to have fun. But with the 3080, you're even more secure, and you will also enjoy games that are really demanding, like all these sim racers and flight sims really well with the 3080 card. So again, if you have another $200, I would go for the 3080. So how about the 3090 then? Isn't that the biggest and best option that you should go for? Well, it's definitely the biggest and best option, but it does cost $1,499. So it's more than double as expensive as the 3080, which will already give you amazing bang for your buck. Now, the thing is, we don't have any benchmarks for the RDX 3090 yet, not at all, not even given by NVIDIA. So let's say that the RDX 3090 is probably maximum 30% faster than the RDX 3080. Yeah, let's simply assume that. Even that in my book wouldn't be worth it paying more than double the price. So you really have to see what you get for the money. So for, for the normal user that's going to have the G2 or the Valve Index or the Cosmos or the Rift S, it's really a waste of money to actually go for the 3090 because the 3080 will be able to run everything that you throw at it for the next couple of years. And well, this simply is too expensive. The 3090 is not really targeted at us consumers. And you can tell that from that RAM, it has like 24 gigabyte of RAM, which is like way too much just for gaming. It's really for professional applications. Also the price, right? $1,500 is really for the pro area. Now, can I recommend this to someone out there? Well, I believe if you are uh, an owner of the Pimax 8KX and if you want to run flight sims on that and if you have enough money then well absolutely go for the 3090 because well for the 8KX you simply need this kind of this kind of power in order to run the 8KX and also to run it together with these applications that you most probably want to run right like DCS World and Project Cars 2 and so on and so forth. So for, for these people who, who own the 8KX or who want to buy it, they would say, yes, you can definitely go for the 3090 and you probably want to go for the 3090 in order to run your 8KX. So again, for most of us VR enthusiasts, the 3080 will be the right car to go for because it's that sweet spot of high performance and also good price that makes this card really attractive. Now, this card only <laughs> has 10 gigabyte of RAM. And I've read some people who say like, hey, probably this is not enough. 
but in my opinion, this is good enough and you won't have any problems with that 10 gigabyte. Because, well, think about this, you will need these games with super high textured graphics that will actually make use of all these RAM, right? And thanks to technologies like DLSS, which is a super sampling method that comes with these cards, where this is help with artificial intelligence so that we don't need to run our headset at the full resolution, this will even help to, to, yeah, to use less of this memory. So 10 gigabytes should be really fine and I don't think that you have to worry. If you really worry about this, of course, you can always wait until next year, then probably there's going to be a 3080 Ti, which has 20 gigabyte, but I personally don't think that you have to wait. You have probably already waited out the 20 series cards, yeah, right? So I think now with $699, with $700, it's a great price that you can simply jump in right now. And I want to drive one point again back home very clearly. If you're not that super enthusiast that plays these sims like DCS or Project Cars, but you want to play Beat Saber, you want to play Half-Life Alex and these kind of games, the 3070 will be good enough for you because again, it has the power, according to NVIDIA, of the 2080 Ti and well, with the 2080 Ti now, those simmers are already kind of happy, right? So for you, you will totally fine to go for the 3070 series as well. And that's everything that I wanted to tell you about these cards. If you want to make sure how good these cards are in virtual reality, then absolutely wait for the MRTV benchmark because I'm going to benchmark these cards and simply show you how good these cards are in DCS world in Project Cars 2, in Assetto Corsa, and so on and so forth. So absolutely make sure that you subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so yet. And uh, well, it's always a good idea to be subscribed here at MRTV. Now, if you're coming from the future and if you want to buy some of these cards, then absolutely check the description down under this video because I'm definitely going to put in some affiliate links there that where you can directly buy those cards and at the same time support MRTV so that also in the future I can bring you this kind of videos. And that's it now for this video. If this was helpful for you, definitely give it a thumbs up and I'm looking forward to see you in the next episode.